Hello everybody, Cedric and Cedric here, CRWC, and we'll be reviewing All Elite Wrestling's Dynamite. That happened just a few days ago. Yesterday. And, oh, yeah, yesterday, a few days ago. You know, potato, potato. I don't know, man. It's just... I'm trying to care. Um, it's like I care as much to review this as people care to comment if they like it or not. <laughs> So, this starts off with Jay White versus Penta of No Fear. Um, Penta jump starts with a, a dive, nearly injuring Card Blade. That's just a no no. Taz refers to Card Blade as Card Blade Jones. Yes, he does. Stealing my personal uh, material there. Mm -hmm. Jay threw Penta from the ring and. The Bang Bang Game starts there, antics and posing and whatnot. Is, and I, I admit, it's one of the fun parts of any match with Jay White. It's so antagonizing, but they're not, they're not touching him. Yep, I'm not touching you. So Jay threw, uh, no, no, Jay tries Penta. Uh, he ties Penta's tassel to the, the middle rope, you know, to trap his head there, but that comes loose real quick. I mean, he tied it to a knot, just a knot, but it just, Came loose and Jay stomped on him. It just, it wasn't a good looking spot. It just wasn't. And then Jay, Jay is small, everybody. Jay, you look at him and say, okay, you're like a flyweight or whatnot. You look at Penta and say, you're a junior or you're a light heavyweight. Yeah. But Jay uses a, a suplex to lift Penta, barely lifting him, dropping him on the top rope. You know, kind of pelvis first a little bit. And then Jay lift him again, barely got him up, drapes him over the top rope, got him good that time, but it was a struggle. Is Jay smaller than he was in New Japan Pro Wrestling? Yeah, a little bit. He's he's more toned, but he's also he's probably about ten pounds lighter, to be honest. He was bigger in New Japan, or in New Japan everyone was smaller, so he looked a little better. Yeah, he never looked huge, but okay. Yeah, he's never looked huge at all. Mm -hmm. Just going on, you know, appearance. I yeah. think, you know. Um, damn, hand slipped out the castle. A little, I mean, the brace. Um, so, I, I figured, you know, he didn't get it the first time, so he, you know, he's got to try again. Then the match, you know, the match was all right up to that point. Then they started the chop exchange, you know, because it's got to be funny, right? Oh, my God. So they do the thing to chop. You know, you got knife edge chop versus the, uh, as has been said by others, the Mexican chop. Or the overhand chop. Yeah, overhand. Hey, Conan called it Mexican chop. And that's the first time I'd ever seen it anyway. We was watching CMLL back in the day, and it, and it took about... A few years started seeing it over here. And I guess they use that chop so they can hit the pectoral muscle <sighs> instead of the center of the chest making that hole, oh, that divot. Yeah. Plus, it looks like it hurts more. Yes. Use the overhand. It'll hurt more. Huh? So, they go back and forth a little bit. Now... Jay White sells it very well. It was actually good and that point's a bit comical. But then Jay's like, oh, you have an advantage. You got the shirt on. So Pinter takes the shirt off. And when Jay chops him, you can really hear it. You know, I just thought the spot was stupid. I, you know, you, you want, you want combat. You know? Yeah. But, you know, uh, it's just annoying. But, yeah, Penta took off the glove, doing it his way. Here's the thing, him taking off the glove and all that. I get the theatrics, and it's, it looks cool, right? But when you're in the middle of action and stuff is going and people have done stuff to you, this is like, okay, you're exposing that the whole match is now reset. Nobody's hurt, and we're just doing this for the fun of it. Yeah. It kills it. It's funny, it's fun, 
But now you're taking out the match. Now the only thing left is to do something cool. Aubrey Hunt says he caught the glove that was tossed after Penta was looking for him. And, you know, they fight. They do their thing. And after a few finishes, Jay kicks out of. Juice sneaks in with the left hand of God. And Jay hits the blade runner for the pin. So after the match, Jay uh, cuts a promo on MJF not being there and J.A.Y. being there because he's a real world champion. So they got to bring that into the forefront since uh, it initially left with CM Punk. But then he claims MJF can't find anyone to team up with him. Juice gets on the mic, cuts a promo on winning the, that he's going to win the, uh, 12 douchebag battle royal or something like that for the diamond ring and then face MJF for the diamond ring where he'll beat him, pawn it, and then they'll go have a real party. He said it on collision. He's saying it again. Like, you know, let let the audience know what's going on. Juice claims his ring is better and that he got it from TJ Maxx for $24.99. The crowd chants TJ Maxx. <sighs> nah. Backstage, MJF cuts a promo, pitting Juice Juice's left hand of God versus the right hand of the devil. Pretty good. Um, the acclaim come in, and Max offers to team up. He denied, so you know he was denied. So he claims to enter the battle royal. Max plans that plans that he's gonna you know win, hold, and then he holds out his hand, saying MJF will have to put a ring on it. MJF leaves and Bowens is like, dude, what I tell you, you know, less is more. And I'm sitting here like, why is it? I'm going to put it nicely. Why is it Max Caster seems straighter than an arrow? And then when it comes to MJF, he looks far more effeminate than Bowens. Because Bowens mannerisms, you wouldn't know he's gay by any means. Nope, not at all. Look at my attire. I'm gay. I'm like, you can't tell by your attire. Nope. You know, you, there's no way to know. When he first, you know, he came out as gay, I was like, what? Cool, but what? Okay, cool. And to me, to me, you know, the way I feel, someone being gay is as natural as someone being straight. It's just, it just is. You are what you are. You're straight, you're gay, you're bi, you're something. I just... I ain't got room in my life to give a damn about somebody else's sexual orientation. I just don't care. <laughs> I, just don't, I got other things to worry about. Uh, you all right, girl? You got issues? Okay. Well, you had to get up and get, go away from the mic for a little bit. Uh, so, that is done. Next, we get Emi Sakura versus the AEW Women's Champion, Hikaru Shida. And we learned from Taz during this match that if Emmy, the one who trained Sheeta, if she won, then this would be an upset. That's what we learned. So if the one that trained you win, somehow that's the worst thing that could happen. I, I'm going to be honest with you. Kung Fu movies, boxing movies and stuff, normally the one that does the training, you know, unless they're training verbally, they're going to mess you up. That's usually how that go. Um, okay, what? Oh, that's what was happening? Bleeding nose? Is it bad? Good grief. What happened? Did you, was you rubbing it? Did you pick it? It was dry and irritating. It baited you. Yeah. Yeah, her nose was dry and irritated. She started rubbing it and stuff and it is bleeding because that's that's what happens, you know. Like, so, uh, hey, in your life, just think about it. You know, sore, scratchy throat. And you're making a little c sound, you know, trying to clear it, trying to scratch what's in there. And the next thing you know, a day later, you sick. It baited you. It got in there. It made you open that area up, cause a little bleeding that you can't tell. And it got in there, and now it got you sick. That's what it do. But, okay, going on this match, you know, Hikaru Shida wins. Didn't really care. No one cares. Then Adam Copeland sits down with Renee Paquette. 
And it, he, he tells a good backstory for him and Cage that he keeps calling uh, Jay. Even though Jay ain't his first name or the first letter of his first name. It's more of his middle name. But still, either way. Um, he makes it personal. Talks about, you know, knowing each other for 40 years. How they met in grade school and well, elementary school. And all these other things that happened. It was, it's really good. It's adding to everything. You know, you don't really get that too often, but it's it's adding. It's really adding. And I it is you gotta acknowledge it. You know, it does add to the total drama of what's going on. It's just well, I I'll, I'll get to it in a second. But he does say that he doesn't want anything from Christian. He doesn't. But when Christian falls, he'll be there to pick him up. And he didn't say pick him up again, I don't think. He does he'll just be there to pick him up. Because he truly do believe that the flunkies of Christian Cage is going to just turn on him, just use him up and turn on him. Um if you think about star power, Nick Wayne and Lucha Soros with Christian Cage, it looks like they're holding Christian Cage back. <laughs> They're the flunky. They're doing what he says, but it's like they're holding him back. It would be, just think about, honestly, even right now, Triple H, The Undertaker, Dwayne Johnson, well, The Rock, Shawn Michaels, uh, Steve Austin, Ric Flair. Think of anyone like that showing up in the NWA. It, it's like, you know, man, it's not a slight against the NWA, but it's how they present themselves and how they make sure their arenas, well, their venues look. It'd be like this megalithic superstar stepping into some dust-filled room with, with cloth-covered chairs and expecting a cheer from the crowd <laughs> that's not there. You know? Here's the problem I have with... Okay. With this whole Christian, Nick Wayne, Lucha thing. I've already go, gone into my thing about Luchasaurus. So I'm not going to go into it again. Here's the thing with Nick Wayne. Nick Wayne is an adult. Yes. He's a very young adult. But he is an adult. And the problem is... Don't get ahead of what we, we were talking about. That's all I ask. I'm not going to mention anything they haven't mentioned already before what you're talking about. He's an adult, and they've got Christian as his father figure. And I'm like, is that really the the way you want to be portrayed on television to the crowd and to the rest of your peers? As some kid looking for a daddy? See what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, okay, Darby, Darby Allen. You can see he's very young too. Not as young as young as Nick Wayne, but he's young. But when Sting got there, he won't like stay like, hey, I'm gonna be your daddy. He's like, no, I'm gonna be your partner. Maybe a mentor. It was a, a actual partnership you could see. Now anybody with sense knows that, you know, Sting is probably teaching the man, not the boy, the I, man. Yep. I don't know what he's teaching him, but yeah. yeah. But I really think it's a bad look for Nick Wayne. Nah, I'm done with I don't, Nick Wayne. I don't know if it was a, it's a bad look. I'm going to tell you why. Because what Cage is doing, it's, it's, it, I mean, when you think about it, that this type of storyline, this is like just making sure that Cage look good. That's really it. And Nick Wayne, he is young. They know he's young. The boy, 18, 19, I don't know how old he is, but... You know, he looked like a little boy. It sounded like a grown-ass man. And you'll see, you'll hear what I got to say later about his look because he does it. Um, we, we, we're we not too far from it, you know, but we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to Nick Wayne a little later because it's, ugh. yeah. I didn't watch everything of Nick Wayne, but I, I'll, 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 ugh. So next, Warlow comes out and his opponent is already attacking him when he gets to the ring. Warlow muscles him into a standing head scissors and then lifts him for the powerbomb. 
His opponent fights back, punches him and punches him, but he takes an elevated power bomb that others would call the last ride. I thought he was going to break that boy's tights. <laughs> the ref declares a knockout and ends the match. Okay, fine. Then Shivani enters the ring, asks Wardlow why he's back. Wardlow holds up his arm and MJF is written on the wristband and Tony Shivani's got to repeat it over and over. Like, That's MJF. On the, he wrote MJF. All right, we get it. No, he wrote MJF. Okay, we get it. We get it. It's, the way it was, it was like he was almost tattling like in high school. Huh? It was annoying. The way, I, look, the better way it would have been delivered is if he points to it and he says, as you can see here on his wrist tape, it says MJF for the current AEW heavyweight champion. And that is who he is after. Mm -hmm. You can all remember what's happened in the past with those two. Wardlow is clearly not done. That's it. That'd been the best way to do it. But no, he did it this way. And then I guess Wardlow has to be a heel. Yeah. As if the company doesn't have enough heels as it is. There's a difference in trying to be a badass and then trying to be a dumbass. Mm hmm. And Wardlow, he walks past Tony, does the shoulder nudge, and Tony, not acting well, not at least to me, but he fooled the crowd, but he nudges Tony, and then Tony has to force himself to drop, to fall onto the mat. Wardlow keeps going, doesn't even look back as the fans begin to boo him questionably. It's like they were booing, but kind of not sure if they should. If this was two years ago, and he did this, the crowd would have erupted. Somebody might have came over the guardrail or they would have been throwing stuff at Wardlow over this. But at least we know his alignment. Yes, we know his alignment. Now he can get in the back of the line to go after MJF. Yep. So he's got to be a bad guy to go after the heel who has enough people after him in a very awkward and not really streamlined way. But the uh, only one that really matters is, is Samoa Joe. Yeah. Where was he? The rest of them go to hell. He's somewhere <laughs> smoking cigars, drinking liquor, you know. Doing his thing. Looking cool in his shoe. Yep. <laughs> I'm going to show everybody how to be classy before I go and take something that I want from someone that's got it. Yeah, let them scrap and sweat. I'll buy my time. <laughs> in the back, MJF walks up to Omega. Cites him at the company measuring stick, gets in his ear and says, 13 days, bitch. Omega's kind of, Omega looked like, the hell you talking about? Yeah. Then, oh, yeah, those 13 days. Like, no, I don't even know what he's saying. You don't know what he's saying. The last, the only thing I can know of 13 is Taz. That's it. That was his WWF gimmick. I don't even know what 13 was. I don't even know what that was, was meaning. But 13 days, I guess, to... A pay per view. I have. I don't know. No I, have, I don't. I don't keep up with this crap. We don't, we like don't that. know what the thirteen means. I'm. Just, I'm I just don't even care. I really don't. <laughs> I really don't. They will do what they do when they get to what they're gonna do. That's. I've been educated to not care, so I just don't even. Nah. I just don't. Roderick Strong and friends do an '80s style porn scene, making a sandwich. Cole complains about everything and leaves. Roderick says the only the only way not to get his friend back is to be nice to the scumbag. The kingdom groans in protest. And once again, Taven's still sitting around shirtless. Yep. Don Callis' family comes out to be interviewed by Tony Schiavone, who just got knocked on his ass. Hobbs is wearing red skinny jeans. Not a good look. Not a good look. Hobbs tells a story of his grandmother getting front row seats so that he could meet Chris Jericho who walked past them telling her to shut up and for him to sit his ass down. If the crowd was actually listening, they would have probably, they'd probably be on Hobbs' side. Yeah. Because that was messed up. They were so busy, you know, country hick booing that they didn't, they couldn't hear anything. Let's boo Callis. Let's don't. You know, we're booing Callis more so than listening to Hobbs. Yep. And it's like... Because Hobbs delivered. He delivered. He, he, he sounded good. He had control in his voice. Passion. There was, yeah, I was about to say that. Passion. He was very decisive in what he was delivering. He did good. 
and the crowd is so busy booing Don, I don't think anyone heard it. And I'm wondering if the whole crowd was actually booing or if some of that was piped in. Mm -hmm. I guess the only one that can tell the sad story and everybody be hanging on every word is MJF. Yep. If I could give Hobbs one advice, you a grown ass man. Do not wear skinny jeans to nope. the ring. Skin Don't do it. Skinny jeans are going out of fashion for women. They need to go out for men. Here's the thing. Skinny jeans on a wrestler makes the wrestler look smaller. Mm -hmm. You don't want to look smaller. You want to look like you got some size. You look like you want to wear pants that says, my balls need to breathe. That's what you need. My, my, my boys need some air. Case in point, Adam Cole, he wears skinny jeans where the crotch is like five inches below his own crotch. He looks stupid. Yeah, I'm like, nice length between balls and crotch of pants, but the rest makes it look like some awkward, tight-ass pajamas. It looks like uh, tights that little girls wear. Oh, crap. That was that back in the day stuff. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, you exactly. them thick tights that you can, you know, you pull them all the way up, and the crotch is still low. You gotta work and fight with it. Yes. Hey, hey man, I ain't thought about that in decades. Mm -hmm. I swear a little. I always like. thought it was weird. Always. Um. So Don Callis calls Fletcher a, a scab replacement, and Kyle comes out and takes issue with it. Yep. It says he's going to prove to Don and everyone else that he doesn't need anyone help beating Kenny Omega. So then Omega comes to the ring. Get to the match. Omega wins with the finisher. And Don is highly disappointed in Kyle Fletcher. Lance Archer comes out beating his opponent up. Yep. They introduce him. Have to pause and then finish. And then after some beating and then a rope run, knee strike. And then, you know, get some... Basically, in the crucifix hold, uh, well, setting up for what you would think the razor's edge, mm -hmm. but it's an iconoclastic slam for the win. Everybody dies. Everybody dies. And we won't see Lance it's, for a while. It's Texas, so they bought him back. Yep. The Have fans we... miss him, and we probably won't see him in AEW for a few months. Yep. Why? Who knows? I think it's because Tony Khan don't like big men. I would have had Lance Archer, I would have had him. Uh, as a champion a Long while ago. ago, just not maybe not the champion, hey, he but he would have had one of the ones that I try to use, make it prestigious with him. He could have got the All Atlantic. Yep. Or what? International. I international. Yeah. International. Yep. Sorry. So now we go to Swerve, who is not happy about the debut remix video because he's not the champion. He makes a strong threat to Adam Page that it's not always him who has to pay for his actions. I'm like, all right, that's 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 a strong threat. The only swear day like showing up at people's houses and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. And kidnapping them and breaking their fingers in vans, you know, that creepy stuff. Shivani, he introduces Sting, who comes to the ring. Sting takes us down memory lane with who he admired, who gave him some advice, even though the fans didn't like him, and who helped put him on the map. He wasn't happy with his 2015 retirement, and at Revolution 24, he will retire. And he said one thing's for sure, that is for sure. The fans are saddened, and that shows how over someone is. They ain't just saying, please don't go, please don't go, and all that. You can hear the lamentation of the fans. You can hear them lamenting that Sting is going to retire. Here's, here's, here's what would be better. You're not, you know, yeah, you, you plan to retire, right? You know, are you retiring from active duty, like in-ring duty? If so, then you don't say you're going to retire. You never mention it. You don't. You just do. But as an active wrestler, you could be, you know, manager or something like that. 
you know, or that guy that, that stay around and you talk backstage and you just, you know, say something to those that you are aligned with so it keeps the storyline going. But you never mention retirement. And the way that wrestling goes, if somebody don't show up, even Sting, the fans won't even think about it for a while. It'll be four, five, or eight months down the road. Where's Sting? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, he retired. Why did he, why did he do that? About eight or nine months ago. What, was there a ceremony? What, what happened? They didn't ring the bell. They didn't do nothing. Oh, uh, he just left. Well, damn. That's all you got. That, yeah. And that's it. Yeah, take that with you. I'm pretty sure Sting is like, look, I'm going to retire. I just don't want to retire the way Ric Flair retired because he, he messed himself up. He did. Next time, not next time, anyone out there, make sure you are properly hydrated. hydrated. So next, Tony Storm does another silent movie where she eats a banana the hard way. RJ City makes a questionable comment and gets slapped and looks stupid mugging for the camera. Tony gets more info and apologizes and then poses for That's said her, camera. Her close up, yeah. Granted, it was silly, but it was better than the first one. Yeah. I just... The first one, like she was having a prolonged fit. My issue is, even from the very first one, these these little skits don't even stand out on the show. There's so much they're trying to do old school WWE mixed with um, WCW uh, promos and backstage stuff. It's a lot that goes on, you know, and it's like, come on, dude, you know, it's a lot. Sting. There was a, a kind of a close up. You can see the black ring rope behind him. And I was like, this could be WCW right now. Mm -hmm. It looked like it. I was like, this could be WCW. But in any case, Jim Ross sits with Nick Wayne and his mother. Wayne looks like an angry, petulant teenager. And I had to know that I've seen that very look when I was a teen to kids who knew they did wrong, but wanted to look like the victim. I'm in, I'm in the principal's office, well not the principal's office, but I'm in like the, I don't know, secretary waiting area at the front of the school. And and I'm sitting there, I'm looking at this kid. He's in trouble, his, his dad is on the way to pick him up because he's got to go home. All right, it's like 11.30 in, in, in the morning. He's got to go home. And I'm looking at him and I, I, I couldn't help it. I just had to know. And so I'm like, w you, you're getting suspended, right? And he's like, yeah. So why are you looking so angry? And he explained to me, you know, let me know everybody out there if you can type. Um, if, this, if this is true. He said, what he told me was, you have to look angry. So when, he said, your parents, he said, when your parents get there and they see that you're angry, they won't be as mad at you because you look like you're either mad at the situation, mad at yourself, or you're mad at whoever, you know, you had to fight. So you so mad, they not mad at you. And it takes a lot of the heat off of you. So I was like, okay. I said, so you got to fake angry to keep your parents from being that angry with you. And he was like, yeah. And so it's probably 15 minutes we sitting there. I forgot why I was even sitting there. And his dad come in. Now I see this, this big dude come through the door. And, he's, and he got the walk. I got to come off, get off work and get to this school and He's mad. He's got to pick his 16-year-old boy up. He walks in, and the look on his face as he opens the door, which is between me and his kid, he opens that door, and he, he got that look like, I'm going to whoop somebody's ass. He's mad. He's got his work clothes on. He's mad. Got the, got the dirty cap going forward and stuff. Got the workman's pants and all that. He's got dirt on him and stuff. 
He's got the big boots on the, you know, with the steel toe boots, dark brown, dirt still coming off the bottom of them. I'm, you know, school ain't dirty. School's, you know, that's asphalt, cement. Yeah. He came from work, work. Yeah. And he definitely he's got an ornery look. He turns and looks at the kid, and the kid is sitting there looking pissed, red faced, and looking angry. Like man, if my enemy was here, we I'd be stabbing him in the neck. That's how he was looking. And the father looks at him, and I watch his shoulders drop. And that let me know dad ain't mad anymore. Mm -hmm. He looks at uh, the secretary. I'm not saying her name. And I can just say this. Everyone thought she had a good body. She just didn't know because she got one eye that drifts. So they didn't know who she was talking to. But other than that, you know, she he goes to her, turns around. Come on, son. Let's go. And the boy, so the, the boy says, okay, after you, dad. So the dad leaves. And the dude, look, the kid look at me. And he smirks with his wink. And I just cracked his smile. And I had to hide my smile. And I'm like, man. He did it. He did it. <laughs> so I wonder how true that is for everyone else. Is that something you've ever heard or done? I'm curious. So in any case, Nick Wayne sits there with his mom, looking like the petulant, angry teenager. And they're going, you know, you didn't have to do this. You know, it's Jim Ross sounds like you're a young kid. You got your life ahead of you. Nick Wayne is sitting there like, I don't care. So whatever. YOLO. Screw y'all. Mom is a Spanish woman in telenovela. Yes. My son, please no. You can't do this to us. Look what you do to the family. Dad Don't do this. Been there for you. Good grief. She oh. was auditioning, man. Yes. Everyone else kind of got it all set. Yeah, she's like, I'm ready for this role. Yeah, she's ready. She waited her whole life for this. I don't think a mother sounds like that anywhere. It just came across as phony and hackneyed. I mean, exceedingly phony. So, Cage comes in preparing to take uh, Wayne away. The mom doesn't like it and slaps her son before he leaves with Cage, who claims he's a better father. No, she slaps him because he said, you, you, you were never a good mother. So, she slaps yeah, him. And yeah, yeah. They then, argued. I didn't then, care. Then she's like, I'm sorry. Like, no, no, no. Ain't no sorry. Yeah. Should have caught a toe kick. Should have gave him one of them, them female toe kicks where they're trying to kick through your ovaries. Honestly, honestly, they can't do it. But it'd be cool if when she hit him, he slapped her back mm -hmm. and she dropped to the floor. And be like, Nick, how could you? And Jim Ross be like, what in the world? And then Cage is like, okay, let's go, let's go, let's go. That would have been super heel level stuff. And that would solidify the crowd hating him to the umph degree. All Nick Wayne would have to do is be able to wrestle as a heel because a flippy flop dude can't be a heel. Nah, they can't. It's impossible. You have to go get a turtle neck, um, flatten his butt some more, and then walk real slow in the ring, and then he'd be there. What is with you? <laughs> <laughs> what is <laughs> I'm clowning on Christian. That's what with me. <laughs> Nick Wayne gotta get a turtleneck. He got enough <sighs> neck, gotta be real long though. Real I, long. I noted the mom as like in, you know what you said, a telenovela when you said it. Mm -hmm. He's like, she's in a telenovela. I was like, I'm gonna write this down. The door shuts and struggling sounds are heard. The mom is like, Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, can't see anything, but oh my goodness. And then Darby Allen, they, the door opens and Darby Allen's fighting them and Sting joins in. The fight spills to the ring where Luchasaurus helps Cage evade the Scorpion Deathlock. Nick Wayne is bleeding oddly from the mouth and it's just, the blood is just resting there on his face, on his lip. And One of his two teeth was jacked up. And yes, uh, you you noted that Shivani was mockingly saying, you know, my tooth, my, my tooth, tooth, my tooth, daddy, my tooth. <laughs> so I thought that was funny. Then they go to the back. Best friends are in the back. The whole group, Statlander, wants to face Willow Nightingale and defend her Turner Broadcasting System's title against her. 
And then Cassidy, you know, he's like, look, I had this belt, then, you know, I, I liked it. And then mouth full of orange or something, you know, Taylor's like, you know, you, you know, you, you lost it. And then you realize how much you love it. And he's like, yeah, that. They're standing there. They're peeling oranges. Just dropping the peels on the floor. Yep. Who raised you? What? You can see him peeling and just throwing it out there on the floor. Just throwing it on the floor. Now, if there was a trash can there, we can't see it. But for all intents and purposes, there was no trash can. Them lung cares were dropping on the floor like they like they stand in the damn barn or something. They got no home training. That's something that a heel would do. Be like, hey, clean that up. You're just like, oh crap, you know. I they They're just useless. I, I'm at the point where I think this group needs to stop. And the fact that Hook was in the shot with him is was bad. Hook shouldn't have been there at all. Hook needs to stay away from this crap. He really does. I'm disappointed with Beretta. Beretta has and fallen. Last on to, 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 to Taylor and I, they suck. They suck. When they couldn't talk or do any skits or something in New Japan, it was all good. Because, you, you, you know, you didn't know this was them. I don't like this. They need to leave. I'd be like, y'all need to go. You, you got to go. You're just done. You got to go. It sucks. I'm like, you got to go. And it looked like three people might have to go with them. That's how I would be. Because this is stupid. With Chris, that line, they ain't shit either. Nope. Hook got promised, but they're turning that promise into a lie. They need to stop. Need to stop with the skits. Okay. Uh, Cassie's got the belt back. Yay. Now let Hook get back to doing Hook stuff. And now, even though I used to love him, now they're threatening to bring Dan Housen back. And Dan Housen wasn't even Dan Housen when he was there. He had the chance to be, but they screwed it up. Mm-hmm. It could have been something. It could have been a contender. Now, you're just a pretender. So, that's good. Then we get to... The main event, which is the Diamond Ring Battle Royal, 12 people. I'm not going to name all of them. My prediction, I'm going to go with all my predictions and then prediction of elimination and then actual order of elimination. This is like the last five people. So my prediction was the last people in the ring will be the top guys in the company to be mid-carters. And the last people in the ring, after skipping, because we couldn't do this, I'm going to sit through all this crap, but it was... Matt Menard, Daniel Garcia, Dustin Rhodes, Max Caster, and Juice Robinson, who all happened to have promos Uh the week before. So, those are ones in the ring. So, prediction of elimination was first it was going to be Matt Menard, then Daniel Garcia, then Max Caster, and it was a toss-up between Juice Robinson and Dustin Rhodes. Because they're in Texas, Dustin returns to Texas, and he had a nice, and, and, and Cedric called it, a nice rendition to Gold Lust. Mm-hmm. So that was that was good. And Juice, I'm like, Juice is somebody that I can see Dustin wanting to put over. I can see Dustin wanting to put Juice over. So Juice would have to win. But I can easily see Juice saying, dude, you've been screwed over long enough. You don't get any limelight. Let's give you something. You got to you got to go. You know, you got to win. I, I I was like, it's a toss up. It was that and a few more things I was thinking about. You know, but I said Matt Menard would be first, and he was first. I thought Daniel Garcia would be second. Nope, Dustin Rhodes was second. The crowd was not happy Mm-mm. with that. Mm-mm. They should have known the crowd would not be happy if if Texas man. One in Texas. That's what you do. I thought Max Caster would be second, but he wasn't. Uh, I mean, third. Third was Daniel Garcia. So it came down to Max Caster and Juice Robinson. Okay. So. Standard, standard. Very standard. Let's fight out on the apron because that builds drama. Uh, anyway. So while Max and Juice was fighting, 
Jay White assaults MJF at commentary. MJF gets the better of him, gets the belt back, tries to hit him with it, but catches a low blow. Jay White gets the belt back after that. Meanwhile, Max Caster is eliminated after being hit by the ringed finger left hand of God and dumped over the top rope and landing like a body best that he could under the circumstances without bad. hurting himself. Yeah. Juice wins the battle royal and will fight for the diamond ring. Um, I can't remember when they said, and I don't care. It'll yeah. be when it is. Yeah. Here but, is what they should have done because they treat them both the same. You're not going to see them for another six months. They should have done. Okay, they're going to have the Diamond Battle Royal because of this ring thing. It's the main event. They do it every year. Every year. So what they should have had as the penultimate to the main event, it should have been Lance Archer versus Dustin. I didn't think of that. The roof would have blown off the place. Maybe it went flying, clothes would have came off. Two Texans. Two big men. They know how to work. That would have been classic. That would have been real good. Mm -hmm. Right before the Battle Royal, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That would have been good. Instead of having Lance Archer win some crap match, we ain't going to see him for half a year. And then have Dustin lose some crap match, we're not going to see him for half a year. How about Dustin win the Battle Royal? Lance Archer's upset with that because he's been gone for so long. And Dustin's like, you're there, but you don't take advantage of doing anything. But you know what? I'm going to take advantage of you and take that ring off your finger. So Rampage, here we go. Mm. They're still in Texas. Main event Rampage. Nobody would really see it. Not really. Half the audience would watch Rampage. Um, I mean, they could do that. That You know, like what you said, I think that's the better one. But I'm saying they could also have done what I just suggested. Yeah. You know, that I think that would have been good right there. Can I get my wrist right with this damn brace? Since hometown seems to make such a big such a big deal in Khan's mind. Yeah, which is why I thought Dustin would be uh, would stay in, <coughs> would stay in there and be eliminated second. I mean, I mean last or win it all because it would make <clears throat> sense. But he had a good promo. He got a good look. He can still go for the most part. He can still really go. Great shape. Good music. They could have reinvigorated Dustin Rhodes. They could have put him up there. You know, but it's a job. It's a business. You're supposed to help bring the most promising young ones up into the limelight and make them look good, not keep yourself over. I get that. So that's one reason why I thought he would have Juice go over, you know, if they were the last two in the ring. <coughs> but uh, it, <coughs> we got to end this soon. You, you are messed up over there. Yeah. So... You know, it is what it is. Um, we lost a subscriber because I guess we weren't doing any uploads. So the person that didn't say they wanted to see anything left because we weren't doing anything because they didn't say anything. That shows intelligence. You know, that's just so smart. Don't tell me anything. Don't let me know if you like the show or not. Don't let me know what type of stuff you want posted. Just get mad if I don't do something. Or if I say something, just, just God damn, right? You know? Yes. But hey, I guess they'd rather have an authoritarian than somebody that wants to be, you know, pragmatic, decent, and, and have some democracy. You know? Like Vince McMahon said, I tell you what you want to like. Unfortunately, that's true for a lot of people. They can't I, handle options. They yeah, I didn't want to be that way. And I, I, it's just not my nature to be that way. People cannot handle options. And yet options, as MGO316 would say, options are good. But they don't want it. Because people don't want good things. They want bad things to complain about. Because if they can complain, they got a voice then. Hey, good job. Nice work. Yada, yada. You know, try it. Try it. You know, um, ah, I would I will respond to uh, wrestling wrestling games or something. Uh, that person had left a comment, and I didn't comment on it because I was just like I'm, I was I'm just like this. I just don't know what to do with this. 
you know, everything that I'm doing. I love CR Fire Pro. I love doing that. But, you know, doing this here, it's nice, but I don't get feedback. The views are low and nobody's sharing. So how am I supposed to know if you like it? So take that with you because this has been Cedric and Cedric for CR Wrestling Commentary, AEW Dynamite. So y'all be good, be chill, be safe. Leave a comment or two. See you next time.